I'm Richard, and this is Jessica, and we are Luton Community Chaplains. Introduce yourself, Jessica. Hello. Um, I was here last week with Ian, so um, sorry, seeing you all again two times in a row. <laughs> um, I'm Jessica Rowlands. I've lived in Luton just about my whole life, apart from going off to uni. Um, I love Luton. I teach here in Luton. And uh, when the opportunity came along for me to be a um, chaplain uh, nine years ago or so, um, I jumped at the chance just to have the opportunity to share the hope of Jesus with everybody, people out there in the workplace, people in the streets, not as an evangelist, as a caring, pastoral-hearted person. Before, I'd always thought, I'm, I'm not an evangelist, I'm, I'm not that sort of person, but can I care? Can I love people? Can I bring hope? I can. So um, I work part-time as a chaplain and part-time as a teacher. Um, I've got three children and, and we do various other different things as well, so that's me. Thank you. Okay, I'm Richard. I am blessed in being just retired. So that allows me the opportunity to dedicate myself to being a chaplain. And we hope over the next half hour to explain to you what it is um, to be a chaplain and how being a chaplain for Luton Community Chaplains in Luton, you can make a difference and a very big difference to the life of people in this town. But before we start, I'd like, to, I'd like to start, as we always should, in prayer. Father, may the words I speak this morning be your words. May those who hear these words understand your message. Be encouraged to be kingdom people. Really help your kingdom come here in Luton. Okay, what's a chaplain? It's an easy question. We have two here. So we turn around. It's written on our backs. It's written on our fronts. Okay, job done. That's what a chaplain is. I think there's probably a little bit more to being a chaplain than just wearing a shirt. Next slide, please. This is one definition that I found of what a chaplain is. A chaplain is traditionally a cleric or a lay representative of a religious tradition attached to, importantly, a secular institution, such as a hospital, prison, military unit, school, business, police department, fire department, or university. And Luton community chaplains, we're not in prisons and we're not in hospitals, but you'll probably find us... Um, in most other places in this town. And the majority of us are laity. We have two ordained chaplains, people who are chaplains, but the majority of us are just lay people. Ordinary, I hate to use that word, ordinary Christians. There's no such thing as an ordinary Christian. Christian's a wonderful person, but we are just ordinary Christians from a vast range of backgrounds who basically feel called to do something about the kingdom here in Luton. Okay, next one. And there you go. This is some of our team. We've currently got just over 20 chaplains, and this is just a few of them. Looking at those chaplains, I've, I've noticed something here. There isn't a height requirement for chaplains. <laughs> you haven't got to be under five foot eight to be a chaplain. So if you are six foot four, feel free to be a chaplain. It does look like sort of God's hobbits, doesn't it, really? But, um, <laughs> but we are, we are the, our chaplains. And as you can see, we're a mix of men, women, a mix of ages, um, and we're a mix of, of church traditions. Um, I'm Church of England. We've got Baptists. We've got Pentecostalists, we've got Methodists. I don't think we've got any Catholics. We have a Catholic, we have Catholics. Well. So it's, it's a whole range of people who come together, as I keep saying here, because we are God's people. What, what 
the fact we are different denominations doesn't really matter. What unites us is this call to be out there, to represent God, to be Christ, Christ's representatives on the streets of Luton. We have a vision, and that's revealing God's kingdom in Luton. Jesus said, thy kingdom come on earth as in heaven. And we genuinely believe that through our actions, the kingdom of heaven can touch earth. We can act as a link. You can see a little bit of heaven in earth if you're willing to put a little bit of effort in. And we do try, as chaplains, to bring heaven a little bit closer in Luton. Our faith and our belief in Jesus Christ and the redemptive power of Jesus Christ underpins all we do. This vision, our vision, revealing God's kingdom in Luton, is a mantra. It means more than just words. We genuinely believe that through what we do, we can actually achieve that. This underpins our faith, our belief in Lord Jesus Christ, underpin everything we do. Next slide, please. And we have a mission, as you would expect. And this is to express Christ's love, justice, peace, by providing support and encouragement to all people in Luton. And that, again, is very important. It's the, I should have bolded this, all people. Because what Jesus told us, he told us to love one another. He told us not to just be for us, but for everybody. And we aim as chaplains to do that. In all that we do, we aim to do it without favour, without prejudice, or being judgmental. We are here for all. We are here for Christians in Luton. We are here for those of other faiths. We are here for those who have no faith at all. So in what we do, we bear witness to the love of Christ. Okay, next slide, please. What does the Bible say? Why, why, everything I try to do, I try to go back to the Bible and look at the Bible, read my Bible, and find a basis as to what I'm doing and why I'm doing it. A biblical reason for being me, I suppose, and what I do. So, I thought about being a chaplain, but what, what caused me? You know, what rational life? Somebody says, why are you a chaplain? Go on, scrope, quote some scripture at me as to why you should be a chaplain. Well, I did actually have a look in the Bible, and I've got a few readings from both the Old and the New Testament. The first one is from Deuteronomy, and it says, if you see a fellow Israelite's donkey or ox fall on the road, don't ignore it. Help the owner get it to its feet. So if you see something, help. Don't just ignore it. Help. Isaiah tells us, he says, in the fam this is one of the most famous, I think, quotes from the Old Testament, but the spirit of the sovereign Lord is on me because the Lord has anointed me to proclaim good news to the poor. He has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim freedom for the captives and release from the darkness for the prisoners. Again, loving people, helping people. We go into the, the New Testament. Next one, please. Thank you. This one, I love this one. This is a brilliant reading. This is fantastic. It's a brilliant script. And he says in Matthew, then those sheep are going to say, Master, what are you talking about? When did we ever see you hungry and feed you? Thirsty and give you a drink? And when did you ever see you sick or in prison and come to you? Then the king will say, I'm telling the solemn truth. 
Whenever you did one of these things to someone overlooked or ignored, that was me you did it for. Now, I'm sure you're all familiar with this passage, the sheep and the goats. If you read it, I personally wouldn't want to be a goat. I prefer to be a sheep. Luke, another, the Good Samaritan. And at the end of the Good Samaritan, when he said the parable, he says to the learned man, the lawyer, Jesus says, what do you think? Which of the three people became a neighbor to the man attacked by robbers? The one who treated him kindly, the religious scholar responded. And Jesus said, go and do the same. Go and do the same. We don't have a choice. You know, we go, oh, okay, I'll don't really feel like it today. You know, I don't think we don't have a choice as Christians. If we read our Bible, we read those famous red letters in the Bible, the words Jesus. Jesus tells us, go and do the same. The wisdom of Paul. However, I consider my life worth nothing to me. My only aim is to finish the race and complete the task the Lord Jesus has given me. The task of testifying to the good news of God's grace. We can stay in our churches. We can stay in this church. And we can listen to God in this church. But how is anybody else going to know about the good news of God unless we tell them? And finally... Colossians. Therefore, as God's chosen people, holy and dearly loved, clothe yourself with compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience. These are gifts that all of us have as Christians and all of us should use. So if we turn back to being Luton Community Chaplains, where are we? And what do we do? Next slide, please. This is Luton. There are pictures of Luton. If I can get this to work. Yes, brilliant, I can point. Various places in Luton. If we start with the town hall, we have chaplains in the town hall. Indeed, Jessica leads the chaplains in the town hall. Does anybody know what that is? That one there? That's Vauxhall Motors. Or LBC as it is now. We have chaplains there. And they've done a lot of work. As I'm sure you're aware, um, the design centre and everything that's in Griffin House is moving up to Cambridge. And they were able to provide a lot of support to people who were going to be moved, people who were going to take early retirement, take redundancy in that place. Anyone been there? Oh, you have. <laughs> oh, dear. You obviously didn't get a custodial sentence then. <laughs> that's, the, that's the Crown Court. We have, we have chaplains in the Crown Court. Again, supporting people, being there. We're not there. It's... Um, I'll come to the magistrate's court in a minute, but it's quite scary going into these places because it's full of official people. It, they're full of lawyers. And in the Crown Court, you've got people in wigs and gowns. You've got judges and all this fine regalia and things like that. Lawyers. Um, you've got police officers. And so for somebody going into that environment, it can, can be a little daunting, a little scary. And again, chaplains are there. Chaplains are there for somebody to talk to. We don't give legal advice. We don't discuss your case. But we're willing to be there to support you um, in what, you, what you're facing as you go forward. The Magistrates Court, that's where I am. Um, I spend two days a week in the Magistrates Court. Um, very interesting place. And I might tell you a few stories about that later on. But again, you're there. You're sitting in the, the public areas. Um, people will come and talk to you. Somebody will say, quite often, what's a chaplain? Or people can say, I've had people come to me and say, 
Will you pray for me? Will you come into court with me? Will you sit in, in the court with me? Um, so there. That is the famous Luton Mall. We have chaplains in there. We have chaplains that go into the mall. Um, they are there for the people in the shops, the people who are there. Again, they have been speaking to people in, it's a difficult time being working in the mall. So you've got people like Tesco's, speaking to people, people in Marks and Spencer's who are all being moved on and around. We have the streets of Luton. Centre of Luton, on a Friday, you will see chaplains walking around the streets of Luton, the centre of Luton. Astors, we have chaplains in Astors. And we also have chaplains involved with a charity called Noah. Do you know? Have you heard of Noah? Dealing with people who haven't got very much and are sleeping on the streets, are begging, and feel very, very much ignored or given up on by society. So. As you can see, there is a vast range of places where we have chaplains. And the thing is, we could do with more chaplains in all of those places. But there are other people come to us and say, would you put a chaplain in here, a chaplain in there? And we would, if only we had chaplains to do it. Can I have the next slide, please? Can I have the next slide, Can I have the next slide please? So what do we actually do when we're doing this chaplaincy thing? We're there. We're a presence. We're not evangelists, so we're not standing on a stoke box quoting the Bible at people. We don't necessarily go and sort of turn up and say, can I have a quick word with you? Can, do you want to talk to me? No, we don't do that. We're there to listen, to care for people, and hopefully help them. So the biggest gift, I think, is the ability to listen. And how do you interact with people? You don't just catch somebody's eye. You see them, you go up to them and say hello. I, I have a, a device, a trick for getting people to talk to me in the magistrate's court. I have a box of chocolates. As you go and say, I'd like a chocolate. And most people strangely say, Yeah, I have a chocolate, thank you. And then you can get into a conversation that way. But a lot of what we do is just listening, listening, praying. We quietly pray. I will spend a lot of time in, when I'm out as a, as a chaplain, even on the streets, quietly praying, praying for the people I meet, being there for the people I meet. Um, it's, it's a privilege to hear somebody's story. It's a privilege to listen to what somebody has to say. And quite often, there's nothing you can do. You as a person could do. There's nothing you can do immediately to help the problem. Those people are going to go into a court of law they are going to be subject to the process of the law. You can't change that. But you can say, you know, I'm here. I'll pray for you. I will be there for you. you know, the, the person sitting there begging on the street, as much as I'd love to have a fantastically large house with many rooms and say, it's all right, mate, you come and stay with me. I don't. I live in quite a small house. I can't do that. But I can sit with them. I can talk with them. I can buy them a cup of tea. For that little moment I'm with that person, I can try and take some of the worries and the strains they have away. And people think, I couldn't do that. No, there's no way I could do that. We can all do it. We've all got the gifts of the Spirit. Two weeks, two weeks, two weeks ago was uh, Trinity Sunday, or you know, the Spirit, Pentecost, the Spirit fell upon the disciples. We can all 
have that. We've all got it in us. We can all help. We can all say, yeah. And if you just want to listen to somebody, just listen to them. Because that's, for some, especially those that are on the streets, somebody actually listening to them is probably the greatest thing you as a person can do. Because nobody else has listened to them. Nobody's actually bothered to take the time and sit next to them and offer them a cup of tea and talk to them, probably for days. You know, most people are probably saying, oh, look at that. Come on, get, get up and get yourself a job. Get yourself sorted. That's the sort of thing they get. But you can sit there and listen. That's all it takes, the ability to listen. And in a minute we'll say some, Jessica will say, what, a day, a day for a in a in the um, town hall is like, and I'll say a little bit about the things I do, but it is a privilege, and it is it is bringing God's love to the people on the streets, or in the town hall, or in the you know it's expressing what God said. You know, you are all made in His image. Jesus said, "Go and love your neighbour." What you did for the least of these people, you did for me. So yeah, it is it is important. Can I have the next slide, please? Some stories. Over to you, Jessica. I'll shut up for a minute. Explain that um, we're going through the name change. So we have been Luton Town Centre Chaplaincy traditionally up to this point, but because, as you saw, we are now at ASDA, um, we're not just in the town centre anymore. So we're going through the process of changing the name to Luton Community Chaplaincy, which is why some of us have a new shirt, some of us have an old shirt. Our banner is the old. It's a transition. So we are the same people. It's not two groups. It's the same thing, doing the same job. Um, so I'm also the administrator for the chaplaincy now. So um, some of my week is spent with the chaplains going into different uh, the different placements making sure everybody's okay they've got what they need helping with training um, doing lots of admin on the old laptop sorting things out booking things in etc etc um, but what I love is a Monday afternoon when I go into the council and we cover um, Apex House, Clementson House, Arndale House and the Town Hall so there's a large number of council buildings that we are chaplains in, um, in the town centre. Um, we've got a team of three, shortly to be four. And probably within those buildings, there's, I would say, upwards of 800 people. So as you can see, our little team of three, we've had three for years. We're about to have a fourth start. Um, our, you know, we are scratching the surface of being available and talking to people. But having said that, we're, we're making a huge difference. They love us at the council now. And if we're not there, they are, well, where were you last week? And, and how are you now? Instead of me saying, oh, how are you? Now they say, how are you? How are you? And I have to come up with a, oh, how am I? I have to think about it. But um, on a Monday afternoon, I go in and we, I pray um, in the council chamber, if it's available. Uh, that's where all the decisions are made regarding our town. Um, we pray in the, in the council chamber. Each chaplain at the council does exactly the same, uh, different days of the week. And since praying in the council chamber, the council chamber for me has become a little bit like a thin place, a place where heaven connects with earth, as we were singing about earlier on. Then I take my tin of sweets, and off I go, I ask God, whereabouts in this huge, vast array of offices do you want me to go today? And I might go to the Town Hall Extension, I might go to Apex House, and very slowly walk around, everybody's on their laptops, everybody's on their desktops in little meetings, offering a sweet, how are you? Oh, how are you? Yeah, would you like a sweet? And they say, oh, what's this for? I say, oh, we're just coming around to make sure you're okay, just to say, happy Monday, um, anything we can do to help. And usually within, um, I would do that for about an hour. But during that hour, somebody will say to me, oh, I'm so glad you're here. 
I really want to talk to someone. Have you got a few minutes? That conversation might just be a one-off. We might go in the kitchen area, find a little quiet corner, and they may tell me something they've never told anybody before. Something, a burden, a decision, something they've been struggling with. It's a weight of their mind. And generally, all I do is listen. If, there's, if it feels like it's the right opportunity, well, I'll offer to pray, or I will say, we are praying for you. Um, sometimes those conversations will go on and on for years. There's a lady who I met who works in the CCTV um, part of the council, so they're watching out into our town all the time, looking after our safety. And I was in there one afternoon, and she said, oh, have you just got a minute to chat? We started talking, and her sister was imminently going to die. And a uh, very, very difficult time. I met up with her every fortnight for over a year after that time, seeing her walk through a whole grief and bereavement phase of her life. Um, had many opportunities to pray with her, many opportunities to cry with her, to laugh with her, to share scriptures with her, to talk about God, to encourage her to talk to God and to find him for herself. And that just came about by being there with a tin of sweets. Still see her there. There's many, many, many stories like that with all of the chaplains could share with you. After, we've talk, after I've spent some time talking with the staff, then I go into the public area of the council building, which is in the, the town hall. And different, different sort of sets of circumstances going on there. There could be people who have just got off a plane, they've got their, car their carrier bags with them, they don't know where they're going to live. They might be behind with their rent, behind with their tax, they don't know how to sort it out. Um, they may be fleeing an abusive relationship where they've had to get up that morning and leave. They've got nothing with them. Um, and I am there, we are there at the council to support them through that phase of their life. So we have a selection of things that might immediately help them. Tissues, pens, paper, phone numbers, colouring pencils, books for the children. Because don't forget, not... All of these people are on their own. There's a whole host of family members screaming and crying and, you know, everything else. So we are there to support on an emotional and on a practical level. And again, often getting the opportunity to pray, often getting the opportunity to just walk with that person through the next step and then sometimes sit with them while they have their appointed time with the member of the council who's dealing with their issue. Um, and I can honestly say, walk away from the afternoon at the council with a, a real sense that God's kingdom has come this afternoon. This has been a moment when a little something in Luton has changed and it brings a real song to your heart and it brings real hope um, to the people that we're talking to that they're not on their own. I'm in the Magistrates' Court, I do one session on the streets, and I'm also a chaplain at NOAA. And it's funny how all three sometimes tend to touch um, on each other. I too have a box of chocolates, so when I go into the Magistrates' Court, you go and give, especially on a Monday morning, first thing, about half eight, quarter to nine, I will go around the, the areas where the staff are, um, where the legal advisors are, and it's amazing. Oh, chocolate, oh, great, what sort of weekend? And you can actually talk to people about their weekends. What sort of weekend? Yeah, it wasn't that bad, it wasn't really nice. And it's that sort of contact you make there that you find people then feel at ease and are willing to talk to you. And I remember going in one, one Monday morning, and I think it was a couple of years ago, um, there's a big flood in Florida, wasn't there? There's a massive Florida got hit by this massive, massive flood. And one of the actors, she came to me and she said, will you pray with me? Can I, can I talk to you? Will you pray with me? So we went into one of the little rooms where uh, so let's have the meeting. She said, well, yeah, I'll pray with you. What, what's the problem? I said, well, my daughter's in Florida. I thought, 
dear, that doesn't sound good. Um, and she said last night she phoned, she was in the friend's house, and she phoned and said the waters are rising, and on the, the local radio, they said that the National Guard are going to come and take us to the local safe place, which happened to be um, a school. They were going to take us to this school. And she was talking to her on the mobile phone. And she must have been a couple of hours, three hours later, she phoned up again. She said, it's getting really bad. The wolf's coming into the house. We're going to have to try and make a, make a run for it. We're going to have to try and go through the, through the floods. And you know, she said, is it deep? She said, well, it's up to my waist out there at the moment. And we don't know. And there's alligators. And so her daughter and her friends went out into this. And that was the last she heard of her. She didn't hear any more from her. And she said, I'm really, really worried now because she would always phone to say that she was safe. And at times like that, you, th you, you don't think yourself, you think God puts words in your head. And he, she said, well, she might have dropped her phone in the water. Or, I know what's probably happened. She's got to the centre. And he said, you've got to say, there's hundreds and hundreds of people there all trying to charge their mobile phones up because the batteries are flat. So we prayed for her and said, I'm sure, you know, I, I just know my heart that she's okay, she's safe. Um, and you're not supposed to say things, but I thought, God, no, God's telling me, tell this woman that her, her daughter, the battery was flat. You know, get, tell her the battery was flat. And so the next day on Tuesday I came, she came and gave a big hug. Oh, thank heavens, you were right, God saved her. Yeah, she got there and she said, a battery went flat and she had to wait two and a half hours to get a socket so she could f charge up her phone. So, you know, that was, a, that was an, amazing, an amazing moment where you think, yeah, yeah God's, God's there for me. And on another occasion, um, people have come to me. In fact, last couple of weeks, I'm sitting in one little area and I'm talking to a police officer. We're just having a chat. And you could hear it's, um, it's what they call Council Tax Tuesday. I think it's every second Tuesday in the month. Anybody who's failed to pay their council tax gets summoned to appear at the magistrate's court. So there's loads of people, and they do it in the public areas. And I'm sitting there talking to this police officer, and there's this, I hear this, we hear this commotion. And there's this raised man with a raised voice swearing and getting very outraged. And this poor one's like, please calm down, please calm down. And the police officer's there as a witness. And I'm looking at this, do you think you could go and deal with it? Because if I get involved, then I will have to arrest them. And if I arrest them, I've got to take them to the police station. I'm supposed to be a witness in this trial. I said, well, if it goes wrong, you will be here. Wait, oh, yeah, I'll be here. <laughs> you know, so I go over, and I said, well, you know, what's the problem? This guy says, oh, 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 oh. I said, should we go have a chat? We can sit down and a little chat, you know, we'll try and calm this down a bit, you know. Keep it. So we, we sit down, and he says, um, he says, well, I thought I was going to go into court, but they said, because I've come here, I've got to speak to this effing woman from the effing council. I don't get to see an effing judge. I said, well, probably best. You don't really, because it cost you money, wouldn't it, if you did that? And he said, oh. I said, you know, calm down. I've got anger management problems. I said, oh, right. I said what's your name? He said, Richard. Oh, my name's Richard. So I said, mm, yeah, I get those too. So, but, you know, just take a deep breath. So I managed to calm him down. And again, you get that little thing in your head. It says, you're a smoker, I said. He said, yeah. I said, well, why don't you just go outside? You've got have a cigarette think, ponder, and then come back. He did have his cigarette, he didn't come back, so I've got a horrible feeling that next month, Richard will be back. But I will, I will get Richard first. But, you know, it was things like that. And the other thing is, going out as a, as a street chaplain, just talking to people on the streets, um, we noticed this woman, and she didn't look very, just didn't look happy. She was sitting in the mail, by herself, head down like that, just staring at the ground. And someone went over and said, you okay? You not really. And it came out and said, Should we go into Costas and get a cup of coffee? Um, yeah, yeah. And so the three of us went and spoke to this this lady. Mental health problems, hadn't got home, she was um, sofa surfing, she was sleeping on people's sofas, but they really had enough of this said lady and told her, No, you can't stay here tonight. So she had nowhere to live, she hadn't eaten all day. And so we prayed for her and left it. But because I was the chaplain, no, I was able to get Noah engaged and get her said, go down there Saturday morning. Go down there, please go. And we've got her engaged. I've spoken to her at Noah. She's still got a lot of problems. But she's but she's slowly, slowly getting there. So it is, I think, a privilege to do what we do. 
and it, sh it gives you an opportunity to share your faith. Again, the number of people that came to me have said, can I have a word with you? I don't believe in God. That's quite often. I don't believe in anything. And five times out of ten, you sow a seed, don't you? And they sort of think, well, why are you so nice to me? You know, because I'm not, I'm not one of your Christians. And you explain to what it is to be a Christian that Jesus told us to love our neighbours as ourselves. And, oh, Oh, and it's that seed, that is how you get the unchurched to come in and start thinking perhaps perhaps there is something in this Christian thing. And so, yeah, so we spend our time doing that. And the thing is, we always want more, don't we? So I so like recruitment sergeant, isn't it, for chaplains. We always want more. And as I said, the number, I didn't, didn't think I could do it. You know, I didn't think I could. I can be quite... Um, quite reserved. You wouldn't think it, would you? But no, I could, when you're dealing with problems, I'm not really that, I thought, I'm not that good at dealing with people's problems, you know. I used to be one of those sort of, oh, come on, get a grip sort of people. But with time and with discernment and with prayer, I think any Christian can do this. And it's a way of fulfilling that, that, that covenant, the covenant that Jesus gave us to love one another, to be there for one another, and, yeah, just be there for people. And if you can't be there for people, then, yeah, what's the point, really? Yeah, but, that's, but that's me. I'm a, that's my evangelistic side coming through. So I think we could probably stop there before we... With our um, organisation, we also have Healing on the Streets sure, within our charity. Um, Healing on the Streets Hots um, meet on a Saturday afternoon down at Market Hill and they have a very gentle um, kind of routine of praying for people for physical and emotional healing. Um, so if you're interested in that or the chaplaincy, um, and we have some people who do both, and um, they're called a hot chap, so, um, you know, if you're interested in, in both or either of those, then please come and speak to Richard and I afterwards um, and we'll get a conversation started and, and see if, uh, if we could fit you in, which we can, into our, into our charity. But thank you so much for having us. And can we put the last morning? slide oh, sorry, up, please? We're finished. Which is just some contact details. I'd like to just quickly close, close in prayer. And I think this prayer, I found it on a uh, website, and I think it really sums up a lot of what I've tried to say and a lot of what we as, as chaplains are about. So if we, if we may pray. Lord, I desire to make you and your holy will the center focus of my life. I choose nothing other than to love you and my neighbour. Help me to be diligent in building your kingdom on earth so that I may enjoy your kingdom eternally in heaven. Jesus, I trust in you.